51 weeks ago when he had 140 against the Broncos. And his yards per carry reflect that injury, Al, only 3.4 per rush. Second and six, Brunel underneath. It's a juggling catch made by Means. He gets to the 39, setting up a third and four. Smith and Aldridge converge on the tackle. Jacksonville playing it very smart. Offensive coordinator Chris Palmer calling probably the plays that they had down. They haven't got through their list yet, I'm sure. And why change it? Get back <laughs> in the game. Uh, get yourselves uh, something on the scoreboard. Go in at halftime, regroup, and uh, come back out. And you got a new ball game. They know they can come back as they look once again at Neil Smith. If they've got 20 plays on their script, they may still be working off that script in the third quarter. Well, he keeps looking at it. I, I, I don't think they're through it yet. Meanwhile, Denver ran out of script after that first drive. That first drive was 15 plays. Injury timeout for Smith. 6.23 left in the half. 21 nothing. Denver. Back in Denver, it's been all Broncos. And, you know, the one thing we should point out, too, is that even though Jacksonville beat Denver last year, the Broncos have not lost any other game in this stadium for two years apart from that one. Take a look at the entire John Elway era. I can speak first and no tougher place in the NFL to win than Mile High Stadium. Third down and three. And Brunel going deep into double coverage and incomplete, but a flag comes in. But Cardell was sandwiched between Braxton and Gordon. I sure didn't see any violation at the conclusion of this play. Looked like there wasn't any contact till afterwards. Number 23 on the defense. Yeah, they get Darian Gordon for using his hands, but he came a long way to get involved in that double coverage. Now he uh, did. Right no there. Okay, about it. you're right. He did. He had his right hand on McCardell's left shoulder. When he had the help yeah. on the inside, he really didn't need to do this. No. Braxton is in good position no. to make the play. No, nope, I didn't see it properly. That's a that's a very good call by the official. It just it, it's really kind of senseless. You've got the help from the safety. You know you got help deep. Really doesn't gain much to reach out and put your hand on the guy's shoulder pad and, and bicep. Exactly. 34 yard penalty. First and goal. Natron means to the one yard line. Mobley makes the hit. Second and goal inside six minutes remaining in the first half. And Jacksonville with a good drive from their own 20 yard line. This is what they needed to do. Get a little confidence, put some points up on the board. Go in at halftime, you're a little closer. You know you can do it. And you know you've done it before and come back out and you play a different football game in the second half. And it can't happen. Neil Smith is back in the game. Second down and goal from the one. Means. No signal. Well, it sure looked like he was in there. Yep. Didn't it? No signal yet from the officials. Will there be a late signal? Yes. <laughs> Touchdown. Looked like the whole Jacksonville offensive team was in the end zone. Ty Halleck led the way with a block. And Vaselli gets into it with Mike Lodish. And Alfred Williams is. Uh, his his uh, counterpart most of the game. Size of this offensive line, they couldn't even see means. And when Natron gets lost, you're talking about getting lost amongst them, some big people. So the penalty on Gordon is a huge one on third and three, and then it pays off, does the drive with this means pulling into the end zone. And by that angle, into the end zone relatively easily. Mike Hollis for the point after. And so the Jacksonville Jaguars have scrambled back into the game with a long drive. 5.09 left in the first half. Denver 21, Jacksonville 7. AT&T, it's all within your reach, presents is my game. Forecast for Denver. Snow by kickoff time at mile high should be 7 to 8 inches of the white stuff. Shannon Sharp, watch your footing. Could be a little treacherous out there. Okay, you see these swirling northwest winds? Don't expect John Elway to be throwing to that. No, instead the Broncos will be giving the ball to Terrell Davis. Should be a defensive battle. Late field goal will win it. That's it for weather, and now to sports.
two hours? All right. We'll be waiting. What are you going to miss in school today? Nothing. What are you going to miss? You want to see? Yeah. Where the rough side is frightful. Daddy, you got email. I did then. I'm going to get some clothes out. You want to help me? It's hey, you found no it. There's no place to go. Let it snow. We're still let watching snow, the match later. New Pocket Net service, only from AT&T. Even though Dodge Ram is the bright red gold standard of pickup trucks, we're always improving things. We've made our available Magnum V8s even more powerful. We've improved the already world-class interior. In all, we've made 130 improvements to the Ram lineup since introduction, including this one, our new flow-through ventilation system. New Ram Quad Cab. The rules have changed. For centuries, man has searched to find the true face of God. Tonight, the search is over. John Denver and George Burns. Oh, God. ABC Tonight. The Jacksonville Jaguars began that last drive without a single first down in the game until that point. And Greg Robinson's defense had barely been on the field until that last drive. John Elway has guided his team to three touchdowns, but Jacksonville gets back into the game as Hollis kicks off for the Jaguars and it's a ground ball that winds up in the end zone and is down there by Hebron. Almost eerie in talking to Tom Coughlin last night he said we, we just kind of are planning on them getting ahead of us early because that's the way they play they come out pick up the momentum and they particularly play that way here in Denver and it's almost uh, kind of uh, eerie that he came up with that. And now they come back and they get themselves back into the game. They've had the lead in every game this season, mm -hmm. including the Monday night game in San Francisco when they were leading 10 to nothing. And by the time that one was done, they were a 34-17 loser, and Terrell Davis had a separated shoulder. I'm not sure he saw himself behind 21 to nothing. No. First down from the 20-yard line, Elway with a lot of time, and underneath hits Terrell Davis for a Short gain, tackled by Hardy. Might have seen himself down 12 though. Yeah, but yeah. 21 nothing. Maybe a touchdown or or something like that. Davis is laughing because he had to catch that ball in self-defense. Did you Elway see the block deep downfield? Watch the block on the left side by Howard Griffith. As oh. he just jackhammers Brian Schwartz, the middle linebacker. Now that is the way a fullback is supposed to step up and create a pocket for his quarterback. Second and eight, Davis again. When a running back gets over 1,700 yards and has a year like Terrell Davis has had here in, in Denver, it's just like Emmett Smith in Dallas. Go to the fullback and give that guy a whole lot of credit. And instead of Moose Johnston in Dallas here, it's Howard Griffith. This guy is a ball player. Third down and five, and again on third down, sometimes third down stats are irrelevant. In this particular case, extremely relevant. We do it again with four whites. Nine for nine, third and five. That's fifth one if you count Shannon Sharp, and that's what he is. Away throws. Got a hold it. For 10, but you got to hold it. Smith. It's coming back. And Wayne Weaver, the owner of the Jaguars, at first frustrated by what he saw, but he'll be a lot happier after this call that will probably go against Mark Schlereth. It's really tough. It's only a four-man rush by the Jaguars. 69 on the offense. That's a 10-yard penalty. Bill third down. It's a matchup you got to like as an offensive lineman. It's just five. It's your five against their four when you're in that five-receiver spread. But just the fact that Mark Schlereth is out on the field is quite a performance. There he is on the left, number 69. You see he gets the left arm on the outside of Jules Menge. And uh, that brought flags from two different directions. Schlereth has had 20 surgeries since high school. The last one for a disc. I think 11 on the left knee and five on the right knee. Unbelievable. That is. Third and 15, and Elway throws, and Willie Green made the catch, but they're going to say no. He never had possession. The ball was jarred loose. Aaron Beasley smacked them, and it's fourth down. And Elway was drilled. But what a great throw on the part of John Elway. He knew he was going to get creamed, and he hit 
his receiver right in stride. He got creamed by Simmons. He knew he was going to get this. Threw off balance. Still had enough on it. And gets the ball to Willie Green. Willie Green tried to tuck it away, but he takes a shot from Beasley. And he never had control. Keep in mind, you have to demonstrate possession. And in the NFL nowadays, that involves getting both feet on the ground with possession of the football. And Green didn't get close Play to the game on the offense. Five yard pass. He's still fourth down. On fourth and 15. A delay again takes them back to the 10. Rick Dennison is the special teams coach. Jacksonville is going to should get this ball in real good field position. Shanahan worked up. Well, Rick. he realizes, uh, as Frank said, Jacksonville's probably going to get good field position. Plenty of time. Tom Rulon into that swirling wind. And it's a floater. Barlow feels at the 34. And gets taken down at the 49-yard line by Randy Hilliard. Well, what a play by Hilliard. Came around the block to make the stop and get the max out of that punt. That was Denver's first kick. Three minutes remaining now in the first half. A whole lot of things swirling about Round Ruin and once he gets that ball away, trips and stumbles over his own guy. And once a punter sees that he can get the ball away, he'll take the ball from anyone. His old man, he'll try and draw the penalty and then then you see the extracurricular things that go on. Well, I've, Dave Thomas just falls on top of Ruin and says, hey, I got him. I think there are more dangerous people to block than the punter. First and ten from the 49-yard line. Little swing pass out here to Jam Stewart. Nice tackle from behind. Alfred Williams grabs it. Well, that was really nice hustle by Alfred Williams because he's cut to the ground by Baselli. It's Baselli's responsibility to get his hands down so you can complete the pass. A lot of defensive linemen just end up staying on the ground. Alfred hops right up. Hustles back in. Watch here in the bottom. Baselli's going to cut Williams right there. He gets his hands down. Alfred, who never went all the way to the ground, that's just nice hustle getting back into the play by Williams. Second down and seven. Jags have all of their timeouts and the two minute warning. Into traffic intended for Mitchell, but covered by Gordon and Mobley as well. It'll be third down. Probably all over the field once again for Denver. Had a great year. Didn't make the Pro Bowl. A lot of people wonder why he didn't. Four sacks. He had an interception for a touchdown. He had three forced fumbles. The fumble recovery. He did it all. The leading tackler. And he is so quick. He is all over the field. Yet he made the AP All-Pro team, which is quite an honor. He made and, the Monday Night All-Pro yeah, team. And uh, some vindication for, for John Mobley. Third and seven from the 48-yard line. And it is deflected, intended for Jimmy Smith. I think Gordon might have got it. Darian Gordon coming in, got a hand on it. Very unusual call in that circumstance. Well, it's a very effective corner blitz called by Greg Robinson. Gordon's lined up on the slot receiver and comes. Well, it's a hokey little screen out to the outside flanker with a one-man blocker in front of it. And it is destructed right here. Darian Gordon coming on the blitz, spots it and goes up and bats it away. Good adjective for that screen, a hokey little screen. Barker. Line drive kick fielded by Gordon at the 14-yard line, and Darian Gordon comes all the way back out to the 28-yard line as we reach the two-minute warning. So Elway takes over, trying to extend the lead. Two minutes to go in the half, Denver 21, Jacksonville 7. last telecast for a while but we're back with you on Sunday February 1st the end of the season the Pro Bowl from Honolulu which begins this year at 6 o'clock 6 p.m. Eastern time Brett Favre will be there John Elway will be there Mark Grinnell's going there yep five reps from either team playing here today first half possessions three touchdowns and a punt for Denver now possession five Elway has all of his timeouts Two minutes to go. Inside give. Terrell Davis slips through the opening and is taken down at the 32-yard line after a gain of five. Took a big hit. Beasley and Brackens converge on the tackle with 148 and took him down. Well, if Terrell hops up from that. Shaking his head a little bit, but he did hop up. With an intact shoulder, it is all right. 
That was a major collision between Brackens and, and Davis at the conclusion of that play. Davis, 19 carries in the first half. Second down and four. And now his 20th carry. A first down as he takes it out to the 43. Chris Hudson hits him. Boy, that's the type of run. Are you sure, Hudson. Al? After day, after he, <laughs> he was actually, he was the hit team. Yeah, I was going to say, you might want to rephrase that. <laughs> yeah, that's the kind of running, though, that can take a life right out of a team. Just bowling over tacklers that could have kept him short of the first down. He Watch take this. the life out of Hudson. Number 37 was on the receiving end. He gets credit for a tackle. Did you get that license plate? He that, was really hammered. That is a statistical term. This is a remarkable performance by Terrell Davis that he has already touched the ball 23 times in the first half of play. A guy that coming into this game questionable how effective he was going to be. Not only is he effective, he is punishing as well. Chris Hudson oh. really took a shot. He'll think twice next time. First and 10 after Denver's first timeout from the 43. Broncos up by 14. Elway under pressure, loses the football, and is able to find it and recover it himself back at the 33-yard line. Now that'll be a sack. John Elway back to throw, getting stripped of the football. And lost it for a minute, didn't find it. Luckily, nobody from Jacksonville saw it quickly either. It takes a Major League Denver bounce. Is that his own man? I don't think so. One of the one of the Jaguars stripped it. Is it Spengi right Spengi? there? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Got a hand in there. Got yeah. a hand. Reached in and pulled it out. On second down and 19, back to the ground. And this time Davis doesn't go very far. Clyde Simmons hot ties in at the 36-yard line. And now Jacksonville is going to take a timeout. It's just going to be third down and long for Denver. So the Jaguars take the timeout. Davis has now carried 21 times. The record for most carries in a postseason game is shared by Ricky Bell of Tampa Bay in 1979 and John Riggins of the Redskins in the Super Bowl. Following the 82 season, they each carried 38 times. Davis, 21 carries in the first half. What Tom Coughlin has to do with his ball club when he gets in there at halftime is talk to them about how we have not taken advantage of our field position. They've had the ball four times, and their touchdown drive started with their worst field position back at their own 21-yard line. They had the ball at their own 30, three and out, a punt. They had it at their own 49, three and out, a punt. They started at the Denver 49 three and out and a punt they have had their opportunities from a field position standpoint and done nothing with it third down at 18 and no play whistles before the snap Shannon Sharp was moving that's one of our pet peeves Frank flexed out like that no and, reason and in the world false start. start number 84 on the offense that's a five-yard penalty Third You're looking in at the ball, but it happens. He split out about three or four yards from his offensive tackle in the bottom left of your screen. There's Shannon Sharp. And looking, looking at the yeah, ball all the way. That's just a uh, loss of concentration. No way on third down. <laughs> this is the first time he's faced a third and 23. Not only has he completed six out of seven, but every one of those six completions went for a first down. They have to get to the Jaguar 47 to convert. Elway slides to a stop at the 28, and now Jacksonville takes the timeout with 27 seconds remaining. Yeah, John Elway playing it very conservative there. He didn't want to turn it over, give Jacksonville the ball at midfield again. Maturity is a wonderful thing, isn't it? Yeah, there were times that he would have been hurtling That's over Jacksonville That's Jaguars. Exactly right. Throwing his body into the path of everything. That ball might have been flying across the middle of the field, trying to complete a, a dangerous pass that might make the highlight real, yeah. either of your team or theirs. <laughs> Yet he's coming off one of his best seasons ever, the most touchdowns he's ever had on a season. Quarterback rating 87.5, and for John, that represents about, I think, the third highest of his career. So Brunel's going to take over. He has one timeout. 
and they have the Pro Bowl kicker in Mike Hollis if they can work themselves in the field goal range. Tom ruined the punt. Reggie Barlow back to accept it. And the ball dies in the wind, but takes a good Denver bounce, a great Denver bounce under the circumstance, and the Broncos just wait and wait and wait. And the clock runs, runs and runs and runs. Dead. Yep, 17 seconds yep. on that play. That's as, that's as perfect as it could be for Denver. Yeah, just about everything working against Jacksonville here in the first half. So and Larry Pasquale, the special teams coach, they had Barlow back there, but Barlow couldn't come up to make the catch because the wind knocked it down. And now instead of looking for a play that gets them in the field goal range, I would suspect they'll just run out the clock. I think we all came into this game wondering how Terrell Davis was going to be. Dan touched on it right at the very top of the show. We know how he is. Who saw this coming? Davis, 21 carries, 83 yards in the half. Three touchdown drives out of the blocks for the Broncos. And at the half, the Denver Broncos lead the Jacksonville Jaguars 21 to 7 at Mile High Stadium. From Denver, we go to New York now and Chris Berman. Chris. And we're back in Denver. Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, Dan Deardorff, and Lynn Swan at Mile High Stadium. John Elway is loosening up, but Mark Brunel will get the ball first because Jacksonville to receive. And Jason Elam to kick off. And a floating short kick taken at the 16-yard line by Reggie Barlow. Straight up the middle into Denver territory. And the second half begins with a big run back forced out by Tim McHire. And down at one point, 21-0, and now 21-7. And with their personnel... And Tom Coughlin doesn't look like he's necessarily a happy man, but he's so intense and so into it. But this team with a ton of time and the right people to make things happen. Great field position. I think they have all the confidence. I don't think they were shaken up by the fact they got down 21 to nothing because they knew they could come back. They talked about it yesterday. They might maybe would get down. Denver does that and they get off to great starts and here they are. 58 yard run back. And out of the I formation. And it's Natron Means, and it's a good time to go back to the running game and bring it inside the 25 to the 23-yard line. Yeah, in reality, for Tom Coughlin right now, he's got to treat this as a nothing-nothing ball game. He can't act like he's 14 points behind. And just, again, the score reflects the complete domination by the Denver Broncos. 246 yards of offense at one half is just super. Second down and six, and the Jaguars, because they were trailing early, only 18 yards on the ground. But now Natron Means, with his second run, takes it to the 20-yard line. It'll be third down and three. And Denver has had problems during the course of the year handling big backs. And you're right, if I'm Chris Palmer, I keep coming at them, keep coming at them here with Natron Means. They only have to cover 20 yards here, and you saw that yardage disparity. They've only got to cover 20 yards here to make this a one-touchdown football game. That's more than anybody who's rooting for Jacksonville could ask for. Big third down play, third and three at the 20-yard line. Blitz, Brunel throws, but the pass is incomplete. Would have been short anyway had McCardell been able to hold on. It was short. He couldn't handle it. And now what will Jacksonville do? They leave Mark Brunel on the field on fourth down. Now they rethink it, and out comes the kicking unit. For a moment... Well, I think Tom thought about going for it, changed his mind. And it was a good decision. Mike Hollis, he'll go to the Pro Bowl. But that's the second time in a row on a key third down play that Jacksonville has come up short. This is a 38-yarder. Hollis kicks it off the upright, and it bangs through. Karam shot from 38 they pick up three and the Denver lead is now down to 11. Vaughn Hebron back to receive the kick for the Denver Broncos as they get the ball for the first time in the second half 13 33 left in the third 
The Broncos leading 21 to 10. Mike Hollis. Hebron drops it at the one and picks it up at the three. And gets tackled up at the 15-yard line. And let's get an update from Lynn Swan. Lynn. Well, Al, I talked to Tom Coughlin as he came out for the second half, and he said in the first half, his entire team, offensively and defensively, were unsettled. He said they weren't into that game. He said he wished he could take back a couple of plays that were called. He should have run the ball a little bit more. He said coming out in the second half, they're going to try and do the things that were successful for them on the touchdown drive. The short passes, he believes Mark can throw the ball deep down the field, even with the win. Al? All right, a promising beginning, Linda, that first drive, but it ended with a field goal. And now Davis picks up where he leaves off in the first half up to the 22-yard line on this 22nd rush of the afternoon. Yeah, what a shocking turn of development that they'd handed off to Terrell Davis. Well, you know that the defensive unit uh, for Jacksonville and Dan and Al talked about different ways to stop Terrell Davis, and you got to fill every gap with this guy or you're not going to stop. And you know that was their prime consideration when they came back out. For him on the very first play to rip off seven yards, that's got to hurt. Well, they have got to walk Travis Davis up to the line of scrimmage. They have got to get their safeties involved. And, of course, that leaves them open to the play action. Davis picks up the first down, five more yards, now has 95 on the afternoon. First down. This wild card playoff game is being brought to you by Lay's. Make your lunch special with Lay's. Nissan, who reminds you that life is a journey. Enjoy the ride. And Miller Lite, now official beer sponsor of the NFL. Dick Duran has no choice now but to put at least eight. And in that last play, he had nine people relatively close to the line of scrimmage. At some point in time, John Elway has got to test a deep post off a of play action. Free play for John. Yep. As it was Brian Schwartz coming across the line. Jacksonville on the blitz, missed time the count. And they'll get the offsides. Referee Bernie Kukar. Offside on the defense, number 58, up the five yard penalty, still first down. First and five. Now the winner of this game will have to wait until tomorrow's AFC game between New England and Miami is over to know where they are going. Here comes the blitz. Schwartz just missed timing it. Winner of this game will either go to Pittsburgh or Kansas City. If Miami wins tomorrow, the winner of this game will go to Pittsburgh. Otherwise, if New England wins, they go to KC. Elway throws, and Sharp can't one-handed. He was covered by the linebacker, Kevin Hardy. Well, he was covered well. It made John put him in a position of having to throw the perfect pass rather than risk the interception. And Kevin Hardy had pretty good coverage on Sharp, who is still not caught a football today. And it's really a matchup that you know Mike Shanahan and Gary Kubiak wanted. Love it. Shannon Sharp locked up in man coverage all the way with Hardy. Well, look at Hardy. He's right there forcing John to throw the perfect pass if he's going to get a completion. And he lost his shoe. Sharp threw a shoe on the play and comes out now. And Dwayne Carswell comes in. Second down and five. Shoeless Shannon Sharp. It's Terrell Davis with his shoes on and everything else working. And full and good order today to the 39-yard line. Big play off a blitz defense. Once again, Denver blocking it out really well. And we have a Jaguar slow getting up. Brian Schwartz. Meanwhile, Sammy Winder with 102 yards in a playoff game against New England. That has been the Denver postseason record. And Terrell Davis right now at 102. Tying the mark with 11.21 to go in the third quarter. NFL playoff back brought to you by Prudential. Just one team has beaten the same opponent on the road in postseason play in consecutive years. Washington at Chicago in 86 and 87. That's something the Jaguars are trying to accomplish today. And in 87, as Brian Schwartz is okay, and he's off to this play, and so is Clyde Simmons. In 87, the Skins went on to win the Super Bowl. Now Elway on first and 10 throws. Caught by Sharp, who's been pretty quiet to this point today. That's his first catch. Skins went on to win that Super Bowl by beating Denver. Yep. After Denver had a 10 to nothing lead. Super Bowl 22, I believe, right. at the then Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego. 
This ball delivered to Shannon Sharp. It only picked up about four yards on the play, but after it was over, John Elway walked over to him, and they both kind of high-fived it. I think they realized they've got something started now. This is his first reception. Second down and four. Davis to the 47, setting up a third and two. Payne and Robinson converge on the tackle. Shannon Sharp, the leading receiver for the Broncos. And it makes sense that Jacksonville has tried to take him out of the game, but they've gone back to covering him with a linebacker, and i got a feeling we're going to see a lot of him here in the second half. Have to work on his shoe problem. Third down and a short two. Davis juggled it and gets Whoa. popped back at the line of scrimmage by Brian Schwartz, who is out for a play, comes back in and makes a very big play here. Now the best tackle of the day for Jacksonville defensively, not only stopping Denver from getting a first down, but making a bit of a statement as, uh, as well. That was, that was simply a sensational play for a middle linebacker. Watch him scrape. There's his fullback out front right into the hole. That's his hole. And boy, he, not often do you see Terrell Davis go backwards after the contact is made. Tom Rowan has it blocked. And not only is it blocked, Travis Davis came up with the ball. An amazing play. I don't think that ball ever touched the ground. I don't think so either. He Huge blocked three. it and caught it. Unbelievable. Huge play for Jacksonville. I don't, I don't think I have ever seen a ball well, I have come off the punter's foot and just stick in the midsection of the guy that blocked it. I think you used the operative word, Dan. It just stuck in there. It came right off the foot. That looked like it was a, a Velcro stuck to Travis yep. Davis's stomach. He's going to come in on the left side. He comes in right up the middle, untouched. And that ball never did touch the ground. Will you look at that? Bounced off his chest, and he caught it. First of all, a complete blow by the Denver punt team, allowing a guy to come up the middle untouched. Rick Dennison has to be out of his mind. Mike Hollis for the point after. Ruin did not have a punt block during the entire regular season. 9-16 left in the third. How about this one? At one point, 21 to nothing. Right now, 21-17. sticks to Travis Davis it's going to bounce off the right forearm right there of punter Tom Ruin right back to Travis Davis so that that was a very fortunate deflection off the forearm of Ruin right back to Davis but still horrible blocking by Denver up front to let Davis run loose up the middle Thomas's kickoff Hebron from the three yard line And Vaughn Hebron reignites the Broncos. Out of bounds at the Jaguar 45. Hebron was questionable before today's game. They made him come out and run sprints two hours before the game to determine whether he was even going to suit up or not. Two key special teams plays here in the third quarter. Another look at the blocked punt by Travis Davis. Ruin never had a chance. You can't do much about, about, about a guy that comes up the middle completely untouched. And in a game where they are being dominated in so many respects, Jacksonville only less than a touchdown behind. This is some turnaround. 51-yard run back. Elway throws. And it will be second and 10, intended for Rod Smith. Of late, one of Jacksonville's problems has been coming down the stretch in the regular season coverage on kickoffs and Denver's problem has been blowing leads having leads and you can't tell me that every guy in a Denver uniform right now doesn't have some nagging doubt about what the heck is going on out here leads against the 49ers against the Steelers against the Chiefs second and ten Elway surveys and hits Davis on a swing pass. He's ridden down at the 40-yard line. Tackle made by Robinson. It'll set up a third down and four. 
One of the reasons that Davis has so many receptions, over 40 on the year, he has good hands. Not only is he a terrific running back, this guy can catch the football. That was a spin around and, and a fine catch. Brian Schwartz, we saw him earlier go off the field, came back and made a terrific third down stop. He's back on, perfectly all right. Third down four. Eight and a half to go in the third. throws and that's incomplete intended for green the flag. Flag, and there comes the flag Dave yeah. Thomas Thomas celebrating a little too early mm -hmm. let's wait till it's over Dave this flag came in from about 20 yards downfield anytime there's only one flag thrown the conference asking everybody else what they saw to hold against Jacksonville Holding automatic first. Number 41 on the defense. That's a five-yard penalty and a first ball. Well, Dave Thomas had a grip yeah. on Willie Green's jersey, even though he had inside help. When you look at it from that angle, that's exactly what the official down the field saw, and no question that he held it. Meanwhile, that Travis Davis block was such a shocking development when you think about it, and if Coughlin did, it probably should have gone for two points to make it 21-18. First and 10 from the 35. Travis, this is Davis. Terrell Davis, stopped by Travis Davis, but not until he picks up the first down. Yeah, I guess, Al, what, what he's thinking is what stage of the ball game it is, and maybe that's not as important. You know, when we're still not even halfway through the third quarter. Mm -hmm. This is what you call your basic but, north and south. He's not, Terrell Davis not even thinking about veering right or left. But when you look at that chart that says whether to go for one or to go for two, when certainly you, when you're down by five, it's to go for two. Like, by four points, 21 to, uh, by five at 21, 16. Davis takes the ball to the 20 yard line. Well, he's just pounding his own men out of his path. Sometimes when you're the lead blocker, like Howard Griffith is, and a good one, one of the best around, you take kind of a, a bruising from your own man. Robinson. Eddie Robinson with a face mask in on Terrell Davis uh, that goes unflagged. Going to be second down and six, and Bernie Kukar is signaling for a momentary timeout while he fixed the chain. Only, only, as, only as strong as its weakest link. Very important drive for Denver. Dan touched on it a moment ago. They'd have to be wondering a little bit. They've been giving up leads in almost practically every game they have played down the stretch. If they could come right back from a bad break like that black block punt, put some points up there, they'd get a lot of their confidence back. Second down and six. Perfect. And he has a first down out of bounds at the 12 yard line. Yeah, Terrell Davis yeah, has run sure. all over this field. He's caught passes. That time he picked up two men and gave John Elway a chance to throw the football. He, he's some football player. He, now he picked them up and put them down. He just picked them both up, though, and dropped them. Watch this now. Watch number 30 to give John Elway a chance. Griffith gets him, misses his man. Or actually, he's the receiver. He was taking a block coming out of the backfield. Terrell Davis made a terrific block. First down. Davis gets his head down. Burrows to the eight yard line, tackled by Brian Schwartz. Boy, how discouraging this is to a defense. Special teams have gotten them back into the ball game, gotten them close, and now Denver is come back out and just taking command once again offensively. Boy, Mark Schlereth, number 69, he can barely make it back to the Broncos huddle. He of the many operated on body parts. He's, he's hobbling. And at the recent disc surgery, second down and seven from the nine. Look out from the corner. That's the ball is loose. It was Chris Hudson who jarred the football loose. And Jacksonville, and Jacksonville has, it. has it. Once again, they make the play. 
Elway fumbles for the second time of the game, and the rookie Ronaldo win their top draft choice from Notre Dame. And John still down. John Elway is hurt. Oh. He does not see this coming from the blind side, Chris Hudson. A good job of not spearing Elway. Hits him with his chest. And Elway up and walking off. Monday Night Football? No problem. Starting January 5th, 2020 comes to Monday Nights, too. Join Hugh Downs and me for 2020 Monday. They work on John Elway. Bubby Brister is their number two quarterback. Meanwhile, Jacksonville, at one time down 21 0, has the ball down by four from the 20 yard line. There was action along the line, but no flag, and it's caught up at the 32 yard line by Jimmy Smith. Jimmy Smith and Keenan McCardell, a Great tandem, two years running now. Ray Crockett almost got there, went for the interception. He was kind of slow getting up. I don't know whether the offensive people upstairs for Jacksonville saw that, but he was a little wobbly. That L.A. fumble was the first turnover of the game. Natron Means now slips a tackle in the backfield, and Means pulls his way to the 47-yard line. Braxton and Romanowski combined to stop him. Remember last year, 140 yards for Natron Means in this game. Missed tackles. Darian Gordon had a shot at him. They don't and take him down low. Not if you're the size of Darian Gordon. No, but you saw that that was a good job by Means of finishing that run. He finished it by knocking two Denver guys over backwards. 14-yard run. Brunel over the middle. Wide open over the middle was Damon Jones, the rookie tight end of the 16-yard line. A kid out of Southern Illinois who scored a touchdown last week at Oakland. And little or no pass rush on the part of Denver. Grinnell would look from one receiver to another until finally Damon Jones came open. The worried look of head coach Mike Shanahan. Worried and shocked. Look at this protection. And Jones wide open. From the 16-yard line. Grinnell changing it at the line of scrimmage. Still has a lot of time on the play clock, and then fumbles the ball. And, and the ball Denver Broncos, Allen Aldridge, comes up with it. Who believe this? A fumble, fumble exchange. exchange. That's, that's what's hard to understand. This is no blindside sack. Oh, mistakes like that in a playoff game. Dave Wydell, the snapper, the center, a former Bronco. Well, the snap appears to hit Mark Brunel right in the hands. Brunel didn't appear to be ready for it. And Wydell didn't have a difficult line to the man he was going to block. Just almost straight ahead. I'm wondering if that snap was early. I'm wondering if that was early because it didn't look like the entire Jacksonville offensive line was getting off on the ball. That would mean Brunel.